Hi, welcome to another episode of the Young Women in Politics program. I'm Anna Katusiyame and I'm your host. Now, before we go any further, please remember to subscribe, like this podcast, share it with as many people as you can because we continue to have interesting conversations with young people actively participating in the political realm and where we get in-depth of their stories, why are they participating in this space? How can we increase the numbers of young women participating in the political space? I have two very interesting guests, um, capable young women that are in the political realm itself, have been able to participate in the last election. Uh, we're active... Um, participants, uh, one as, a, as, as a, a parliamentary candidate uh, and the other, well, we can't wait to hear your stories. I'm going to give them a chance to introduce themselves so that we get to, to know them better. Hi, Anna. Thank you for having me. My name is Hi. Tinashe Mazala and I'm from National Restoration Party, known as NAREP. I'm currently serving as the National International Relations Chairperson mm -hmm. and I've been in NAREP for seven years. Wow. Okay. Thanks, Anna, for having us here. Yeah. My name is uh, Albina Msakanya. I'm from UNIP, mm -hmm. <laughs> United Nations Independence Party, and I've been a member since 2016. Hmm. Interesting. So my guests, as you have heard, uh, Tinashe Mazala and Albina Msakanya, both active in politics. Uh, Albina the United National Independence Party. Yes. <laughs> First of all, you look young. Uh, we would like to know how old you are and why you started, you went into politics, why participate in politics, and also the choice of political party. You know, this is a party that ushered us to independence, and this party is still existent. And to have a young person like yourself, what attracted you to the party? Okay. Thank you, Anna. Yeah. Um, I'll start with my age. Yeah. <laughs> Though people say I don't look my age, mm. I'm 28 years old. I started politics when I was 20, 21. 21. Wow. I contested as a councillor in my ward, mm. um, Kariba ward. Mm. And from there, I found myself to be a member of parliament for, for UNEP. What attracted me to UNEP was not necessarily the party itself, but the ideology the ideologies mm -hmm. of humanism. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we used to hear about stories of how Zambia used to be great, post-independent, everybody when they finish school, uh, they find themselves either in employment or they, they go and have uh, the country service. But here is this uh, graduate from college, they finish school and there's nothing that uh, the country is offering for them. They try to, to apply for employment, there is nothing. And you have two options there. Either you sit back and watch as the world grows without you, or you take part active in politics and try to find spaces for young people. Whether they are, they are graduates or not, you try to say, okay, this is us and we want to find ourselves in this space. We also want to to contribute to our country welfare. So I joined politics uh, because I wanted to help my community. Uh, coming from a community where we had been, we had been putting or ushering members of parliament, councillors, but yet we still face the same situation, the same problems, and people are just comfortable. They're no longer like interested in wanting to, to even vote. Because they see, even if we vote, they told us the same stories. What's the difference? So it's better we just sit back and watch as we see our country grow. But I feel there's nothing for us without us. So I started my journey as a young youth and it has been interesting. From the age of 21, also very good and compelling reasons for why one should either engage themselves in active politics, but also why in your selection of political party, where you looked at the party ideology and very good reasons, I think, that, um, that you have given. Mm -hmm. Now, Tinashe, you talked about being with the National Restoration Party for seven years. Um, I'm sure also there, like, it would be good for you to share your, your, your actual age with mm -hmm. us. And then seeing as 
Well, I think NAREP is one of the parties that came with very young, um, uh, you know, it brought a young face to politics. Mm. And I can understand that um, that was also important mm. in driving and bringing more young people uh, to the fore. So we would like to also hear what your experience has been, why um, you went into NAREP, but also that you have been able to sustain yourself for this long mm. and also <coughs> actively participated in the last election. Yeah. Um, I think for me, me venturing into politics was something that happened gradually, even before 2015, right. before I actually joined a political party. I think I had a series of events which made me realize that um, our country has so many problems and it, it broke my heart to see a country with so many resources mm -hmm. be in such deep poverty. Mm -hmm. And it made me want to be part of the solution. I joined politics because I think at my heart, I'm very passionate about development. Right. I think one of my tipping points was this story um, of when I was in Form 5 or Grade 12. Mm -hmm. And we were doing this community service trip. And I, I met this little boy while we were um, doing some of the community service things and he was he had just gone into grade eight and he had over 850 points okay. and he was in rural lusaka in a government school and this and those little, are very good exactly those results, are very yeah. good points yeah. because you know sometimes government school isn't always good so it, it yeah. shows you that this boy was genius yeah. and then um he happened to also be from a very poor family mm -hmm. and he was hiv positive and mm -hmm. his family barely had enough food to right. sustain them and he wasn't sure if he was going to get into school the next term and all of that right. and for me just seeing that backdrop of poverty um, compared to that school I was at right. where we had um, top government officials children right. um, the the, the previous president, the president right before that had his daughter there. So, and with a lot of those, it was the government paying their, for their school fees. Mm. And then it made me realize even the government is not broke. We just have right. a misplace in our agendas. Yeah. Because why is they, this boy not sure about if he's going to school the next mm. term and his mm. school fees is something like 300 kwacha or something right. like that. And then the government is dishing out thousands. Like mm. they, there was a mismatch and they were just, other things that I went through and saw and experienced and I saw that there was a problem with our governance system mm -hmm. and rather than just complaining, I wanted to be the solution. Mm -hmm. So fast forward to 2015 when I actually joined a political party, I took the time to read the ideologies of all the political parties I could lay my hands on. Right. And I found that NAREP resonated strongest with me in terms of what I feel needs to happen in, in the country, the development agenda, and things like that. And I had um, monitored the president um, then, Elias Chipimo, since the 2011 election. And the things that he said resonated with me. So I think when I made the decision to join NAREP, it only made sense to me. And I think I've also stuck with the party because of... Um, the values, the same values I was telling you about and, and the agenda and just they mm. always had a unique way of addressing issues. They always wanted to think outside the box. Mm. And it was also it's, it was one of those parties that was not started because someone broke away from another party. Mm. So they, they were not starting with these bad manners that are already existing right. in, the, in the political circle. And, yeah. and it was it was very new, very fresh. He was not a politician. He had come out of the corporate world and mm. was trying to make an impact on the country. So I think for me, that's what led me to my political party. And you asked my age, right? Did I tell you? No, I'm no, no. 30. Yeah, yeah. So I'm 30 years old. So meaning yeah. I've been part of NAREP since I was about 22 or 23. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. I think one, one of the things I really get from the both of you, um, one of your reasons, um, your main reasons for getting into politics is service. Mm. And where you see the challenges that are uh, happening in your communities, and then you see how, how do we change this? And then what vehicle, and for Zambia really, one of the main vehicles um, that will take you to political office, the main one is the political party. And that's where sometimes a mismatch with many young people is where the political party is the driving vehicle that will take you to political office where you can then now start to address some of these uh, issues di directly from a political standpoint. Um, but at the same time, political parties have this dirty image, you know, uh, attached to them where many young people like yourselves at the ages when you got into politics, 
don't really want to participate in politics? How did you thrive? How, how did you find yourself there and be able to, you know, get yourself, you know, rise through the ranks? Because maybe you can now start telling us about some of the things that you've been able to do in those seven years, because I know that in the last election, you were both, both in the last elections, you were both very, very active. Now to get to that point as a young woman, I mean, we can't ignore the many challenges and the barriers that exist for especially young women. So how, how, how do you do that? I'll start with you, Albina. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, can, I can start first. Mm. Um, just like you said, it's about yeah. service, eh? Right. In as much as you want to join a political party, you have to show that you, you can offer something to a political party that they do not have. Mm. And most of it is that they do not have young people who have the mind and the capacity. Mm. They are not persistent. A lot of young people join political parties, but they are not persistent because mm. they find even in political parties, they are competition. Mm. Like in as much as she is in a political party, there are also other young people who are competing with her. Mm. Instead of competing together so that you, you find a common goal on how you can build other young people to be in a political party, you nice. compete against each other. Mm. So for me, I, I started from a rural monk. I was in a district, mm. but when they saw the passion, they saw, they saw the passion, they saw the resilience, like mm. this is a young person. Beside, I, I, I looked way younger. Mm. I used to look like I'm like a teenager like I that. <laughs> you understand? And yeah. she's talking sense and she's pushing for these spaces. Why can't we upgrade her? So I went from district mm. to province to national, re national level in an instant. Not necessarily because I, I, I had everything figured out, no, but because I wanted to have a voice which can be heard, not just for myself, but also for my peers. Mm. So you start by doing a service to the political party and they'll start counting you in as one of them. And when you, when you go out there representing them, they'll feel proud, right. but not whereby, what I've noticed like in, in the political scene right now, a lot of young people are down like cutters, they're okay being cutters. They do not want to be in positions where they can be leaders, no. They just want to be there as long as they are associating with somebody who has power or influence to power, they're okay with it. They do not want to be them themselves being in the position of power. Mm -hmm. So we need to change that narrative whereby young people can know that even them, they can be at the national level, be a leader in a political party because they want to see they change themselves. As long as we continue having our young, our young selves, young people, because I'm part of them, young selves underground, we are not going to push everything. Tinashe can be at the national level as long as there's a gap between Tinashe and people who are on the ground. Mm. There's nothing we are doing in politics because the link isn't the chain isn't linked. Mm. So we need to make the chain link. Right. Tinashe has to have somebody who is closer to her, but the chain is moving on, passing right. on to the last person. So they say you are strong as as the uh, the chain is strong as its weakest link. Especially when we talk about bringing more young women to the space. Mm. I mean, I think one of the biggest challenges that we have in Zambia is really inclusion. Um, we're in a country where I think it's now more than 60% of Zambia's population is youth. And by youth, we mean people below the age of 35. Mm. Um, but currently, uh, in our National Assembly, we only have seven people below the age of 35. And... Out of those seven, we only have one, one female below the age of 35. So it brings, see, women continue to be marginalized. Um, and then we don't have women in that space. Mm. So how do we start to create the change we want to see? Mm. And I think this is where you bring out the link, mm. where we need more women in these spaces. We need more young women. I mean, I think... Um, in, in, in episodes, we've touched on the many challenges mm. that um, young women are facing. You know, things to do with the sexual reproductive health, um, 
period poverty, mm. so many challenges. We can go to education and different challenges. But these things can only really be addressed by having young people mm. in the space that will be able to contribute mm. and bring about policies that will support the plight of even more young women. Mm. And I, I guess, which is why it's very important um, for us to have uh, conversations like, like this, but this, also yeah. to inspire even more young women to mm. enter the space um, mm. like you like, mm. like you have. Yeah. So, Tinashe, like, so what's your take, you know, your growth? Uh, um, I think just like Albina, I also started from, like, I think constituency or district level. And I think I was, like, an assistant secretary or something like that. And then people quickly see the values like you give input or you offer to and I think for me I, I also believe in being if I see a problem and I'm capable of fixing it I'm going to do it so it, it also showed a lot of my capacity and you know you just I, I just kept rising and rising and then I think also something very similar to Albina we have the advantage because we are from smaller political parties so I think they, there are less people competing for some of these positions than they are in larger political parties. Oh, an important point. Yeah. Like, very important yeah. point. I was, go I, I was actually going to come to this. I think you, you'll finish, and I, I, we'll come and touch yeah. on... Um, since political parties are the driving yeah. force in our yeah. political landscape, but sometimes everybody wants to go to the larger exactly. parties. Exactly. You know? And, and there are more ways of killing a man. Exactly, right. and it's like to say I have to use the same methods. Yeah, that's right. true because mm. also with pol with the larger political fight parties, you are mm. fighting, mm. and I know like even she will attest to this. We've been offered to be joined, like people will come and poach you because, you, like yeah. you say, they're not young many young women. Right. So when people see you're able to articulate issues, you have a good head on your shoulders. You're not scandalous in terms. They're always going to try and poach you, and they'll give you these perks. And you know, and for me, one of my the things that have kept me from not jumping is seeing some of the mess and the drama that people deal with in, in these bigger political parties. And it's not to say there's no drama in the smaller political parties, but I will tell you that for me, there's been a lot more room for growth than I've seen with other people. Because you'll find you're in the youth wing, your chairperson is 60. At right. what point is someone actually giving you the chance yeah, to no go and attend some of these youth-related events and do things like that? So I think a lot of it has had to do with being in a smaller political party. Right. And then also, um, I, I also had the privilege of being in a party where, like I was saying, there was a time where we were dubbed the party that is the intellectual party that always talks about issues. I remember my aunt telling me every time there's an issue, your president rushes to write an elaborate paper about it yes. instead of doing grassroots mobilization. Mm -hmm. And it's about the balance and, right. and, and stuff like that. And, um, and then you said also the, the advantage of being in a bigger political party. Mm -hmm. And f especially if you're trying to be a candid candidate on the ballot paper, right. your chance of actually winning an election sometimes is higher in the larger yeah. political parties, let's be honest. Right. But then on the flip side, mm -hmm. you actually getting onto the ballot paper in a smaller political party is very slim. Mm -hmm. And um, for me, one of the things that I've been privileged about is w within a small political party is, um, I remember being in a women's lobby meeting and she was saying, in my party, just become a, a women's chairperson, mm -hmm. you have to sleep with someone. And I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> All I've had to do is show my capacity. So people right. sometimes take advantage of these things. So going back to what I was saying, I started from like district level mm -hmm. and then quickly went to, no, I think I started with constituency level, district mm -hmm. level, provincial. And then um, one of the, I think my, one of my biggest jumps was I was moved from the youth wing to the women's wing where I served for, I think I was doing like, I was a media liaison and, and doing things like that. And I think I was about 25, so I was very young. I was like one of the youngest people in, in meetings and things like this. And it also gave me a lot of capacity. And then I got moved to the national level. And I think so far the, the highest role I've held is the one I, I, I hold currently, which is the national international relations chairperson. And then also I served as the national coordinator for the 2021 campaign so I think for me it was like that was one you've been able to rise to these large portfolios that somebody someone young and at your age in a larger political party let's be honest 
cannot rise to that kind of portfolio. And it's not that they cannot, it's just a lot harder. The barriers are there. Yeah, like the it's barriers, very, yeah. And when I said cannot, it's because there are situations in those political parties that hinder mm. young people, especially young women, to progress to such. And I say this because I want to now sort of look at strategies because mm, yeah. they are not, like that's strategies for young women if you're going to get into these spaces first of all you need a platform for look at it like you know a training ground mm -hmm. and that's what the political parties that you have been able to join have done for you they've created this training look at you now this so much experience that you have gotten and you're able to bring relevance mm. in a space i mean we have been with you in um different platforms yeah. and we can see the kind of capacity the kinds of skills the kinds of experience that you bring to the fore and i think when i talk about strategies these are some of the strategies mm. that we should put out to many young women yeah. is that enter the space but don't go where you see that there are several challenges mm. you brought i mean just now when you were speaking you talked about uh, several challenges sexual harassment being it's, the, it's one the, of the biggest. The I think let's unpack sexual harassment, right. honestly, Anna, because and, and I think it's because it's funny. one of the things you yeah. cannot run away from mm. in these political parties. Right. And even me, who's in a smaller political party, mm. I've experienced it. I think it was in my first or second year, and the person has since left the party. Right. But they said to get a lot friendly, like mm. friendly and stuff like that. And I remember this one time on, on a phone call, mm. he's like, okay, baby. And I sent him a text. Mm. And I told him, I, I do not know where you think right, this is going, right. but that should be the last time you ever refer to me like that right. because I'm uncomfortable. Mm. And what this did or in, in, in situations where people have gone past my boundary, mm. it first of all, you draw where your boundary is. They right. know they can't mess with you. Right. And then they also become marketing. It's like, no, that one don't. Mm. Like, mm. Do, don't even try right. there. Yeah. She's, right. and, and the worst thing about these situations is they also sometimes try to make you feel bad. Mm. It's like, why are you so uptight? You mm. don't joke. Right. You don't, like, if you said something funny, I would laugh. But it's not she a joke, it. you know? <laughs> and, you know, with sometimes men have this habit of, if you are serious, I'm serious. If, it, mm. if you take it as a joke, I'm yeah, joking. Yeah, so yeah. it's it's the sexual See, harassment. About strategies. Yeah. So Just like, and, so and there, it, is, there is importance in young people to set boundaries. Yeah. yeah. Wherever they are, it might not even be in the political space, right. but there is need for them to set boundaries. Mm. And that's the most important thing that young people or young women do right. not understand. Like mm. most of the time you find a young person they're somehow in this bubble. Mm. I don't know how to explain it, but mm. they're in this bubble. They think everything is in dreamland. Mm. When you go into these spaces, nobody's going to sexual mm. harass you because yeah. probably they are older than you. Yeah. But there are a lot of people who are going to sexual har harass you. Mm. But you have to find strategies in how to yeah, avoid yeah. such. How do you overcome it? How do you overcome it? Mm. First, you have to be principled. Mm. There are a lot of young people who go out there uh, and I don't want to talk about dress code because mm. it's not about the dress code. Mm. You can dress decently, but somebody will still harass you. Yeah. But it's about your personality, mm. your principles. Mm. How were you? How do you adjust to a certain environment where there are lots of male folks than mm. female folks? Mm. In as much as we are on the top national level, mm. there are a lot of uh, gaps between the women. Mm. Women are fewer on the national. Mm, right. Even when we go district or provincial, there are fewer. Mm. And you 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 find it even difficult to to like uh, have this uh, bond right. with somebody who is a female in your political party mm. compared to the male folk. Mm. The male folk will be more welcoming to you, mm. but you have to know how you address yourself to them mm. and how they should address you. Yeah. Mm. So I think um, boundary. Is so, necessary. So we'll continue to have uh, these conversations, and I think uh, there's an episode where we've unpacked um, and tried to talk about sexual harassment mm. and the challenges, you know, um, that exist for young women uh, in politics, especially with men being many of the gatekeepers. And really, the only way is this chain that you were talking about. The only way we're going to continuously find a way of, I don't know, stamping down sexual harassment is by getting more women in the space so that men stop being the only gatekeepers in the space I think we yeah. also need more policy within mm. our political parties right. because i find that sometimes women are also the preservers of this 
toxic um, culture. I remember once having a conversation with someone, a female who was telling me, you can't bring your party to disrepute. Why you? I'm like, I'm not the one who brought the party to disrepute. The person that decided to cross the boundaries and sexually harass or abuse a person, mm. that's the person bringing it to disrepute. Me bringing it out mm. doesn't mean. So it's, and I think a lot of the time we find pushback around um, these sexual harassment policies because people want there to be a blurred line. They, they don't want anything telling them they can't do what they want to do to people. You know, because they, they want to do these things and they want to not have repercussions. So the, the moment you put this in writing, there's a repercussion and you put, you put them more at risk. But they're not thinking about protecting the females. So, and I'm glad there's an episode that actually unpacks this. Yeah, yeah it does. So this episode, now you see, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> so it's a real, it's a real mm. issue, yeah. but it's important. Conversations like this, yeah. I mean, bring it to light, but then also you find ways, you know, finding strategies, people like yourselves mm. that have yeah. been able to sustain yourselves within political parties, being confident enough, mm. speaking up for mm. yourselves. And that's important. I mean, that's important for other women to see. But what I really wanted to touch on was mm. also your experiences from the last um, elections. Mm. Can we just, you know, uh, quickly touch on mm. that? Because I think your experience in the political parties in the last years mm. that you've been able to grow probably brought you, it culminated to your participation in, in the last election. Mm. What was that like? I think um, for mine was supposed to start as me being a candidate on mm. the ballot paper. Right. So I had been adopted as um, the Kitwe mayor for my party. And then I had issues around filing in my nomination. So my grade, just starting with get, trying to get my grade 12 certificate, my school didn't give it to, they gave it to me the day of the election. And it was, it was just so dramatic. But then... No, so I have my certificate, but yeah. they needed they need like a certified signed that, and it was like it has to be a recent date or yeah. something. Yeah, it oh, had to be a recent. Back, yes, back then. Yeah, it should so, be th that, so that was the issue. Back. So and if, I had started, if my squeeze in, I don't know, exactly. going somewhere else. Because like my party president had yeah. to send someone to Eastern Province, and imagine he graduated what seventies or what, whenever that far back. <laughs> yeah, but, and, and for man. me, like I kept trying to get in touch with them. They said they were looking for it, and they sent it on the day. Then now dealing with ECZ and all of that. And then also, for me, I found that there were also a lot of gaps within my party on the flow of information. Because I'd never done this before. The flow of information, instructions and stuff like that. And I wound up not filing in my nomination. But then when I took it, like when I was like, I was, I was sort of disheartened because I also just wanted to start to gain like the relevant experience of being a candidate but then i looked at the gaps in my party and i said okay if i'm having this problem or i had this problem other people have had this problem in the country and so then i spoke to the president and i told him um i'm not going to i have i haven't filed in my nomination so i won't be able to stand but i see there's issues and I, let's see how i can help how can i help let me use my expertise and he was blown away and and from then it was it was actually supposed to be like a remote role and i was i was supposed to help out a lot less than i but the gap was so huge and this is how i wound up taking up this this run this is also a strategy look for the gaps and fill them because you know the the times when people the gaps are not filled maybe people don't have the expertise or people are just not aware of the gaps. And if you show that you are valuable, people are always going to hold on to you in your party and they're always going to create space for you. Mm. Because even when that happened for me within the party, people were not happy. Right. It's like, you've brought this small girl. What does yeah. this small girl? And you know, like, and it was just also having the wisdom to navigate in those situations. And by the end of the election, I'd mm. won those people over because mm. they saw, okay, this small girl, knows what it is that she's doing space. and she's made this space easier she's mm. not coming to want to take over mm. she's brought in a different voice a different perspective that we're not seeing and to go back to what you're saying about inclusion mm. we also need to sometimes remind these people no i'm not trying to push you aside right. i need your expertise as well because there are also certain things i don't know i'm not i'm not the wealth of knowledge all i'm doing is adding a different leg to the table that was not there before and now there's there's more stability so i think yeah did I answer your question? You did. You, you did. And we sort of, we have to wind up. And there are many lessons, mm. I think, from your experience. And I want you to think about some of the lessons mm. that um, you can give to other women in the space, mm. you know, in, in the political space. How do you prepare yourself, especially like, you know, for an election? 
there's so many bottlenecks that that you face mm. but you managed to thrive and also find you know be relevant in that space and then you still came out on top uh, in your political party i'm also going to come to your bina uh, i think for you also just drive maybe pick on some of the lessons and okay. maybe you can tell us um what your experience was like but mostly like pick on um the the lessons or like so, sort of couple it with advice that you would give for somebody who is running okay. next time well yeah. i will start with saying when two elephants are fighting it's the grass that suffers in this scenario um 2021 elections for me was a very big lesson because during that period we had in party conflict in my party and some didn't want me to contest others wanted me to contest so i had this um deja vu whereby should i go or i shouldn't and then i ended up going so the other part which was from where i was coming from they're the ones who didn't want me to contest and i felt like i was all alone because in this election i was contesting as an mp who didn't have candidates like councillors so it was more like an independent candidate but one thing which we need to know as young people we have the minds we have the brains and we need to just trust our instincts to say okay why are you standing in the first place because there'll be always those people who will try to de de demine you to say why are you standing? I mean, everything is fine in this country. Why should you contest it as a young person? But you feel like there's a need for young people to actually be in the political space because most of the time we are being sidelined of a lot of national issues that we do not participate. So to cut the story short, because this is a long story, I contested and they made sure that um, I, I wasn't going to be successful in my filing, you know, for my nomination. But goodness, Piper worked out to my right. advantage. Strategy. Piper <laughs> worked out to my strategy. And when you have the right capacity. Yeah, yeah. because during that time, they made sure they told all oh, the members in the wards and brushes to say, don't go and support her for the filing in of the nomination. Mm. Little they didn't know is that I was actually working with power structures. Mm. Mm. So when they told me we've nominated you, go and file in your nomination, I was there and I filed in successfully. Right. I think one thing which young people need to understand is that you need to have information by your tip, tip of fingertips. Your, yeah, yeah, fingertips. Mm. You need to have that information. Because in as much as it was my second time filing in my, uh, my nomination or mm. contesting in an election, mm. there was some information which I was lacking behind. Mm. And it was nice that I was networking with my, my comrades from mm. Piper, obviously. Mm. Uh, I, I called Daniel to say, help me. I don't know what's happening. There's no one who's helping me in this, mm. in this issue here. And he told me, do this, do this, do this. Uh, I think ECZ staff were also like supportive mm. and the police was also supportive. Mm. The other thing which I wanted to mention was that, um, you know, as a young person, we always feel like we lack, mm. we are inadequate and we cannot do certain stuff. But if you go in this political scene, you find like you have that solution that we are actually looking for. Right. These political parties, I may say, <laughs> They'll hate me for this. Mm. Most political parties, they do not have this capacity of young brains. Mm. We understand our generation right now. Mm. And we have the solution. Right. So the need for young people to be in these spaces is very vital. Mm -hmm. So oh, it was <laughs> quite no, a I mean, lesson. I think <laughs> this conversation <laughs> can yeah. go on and on. But I think my takeaways, strategy. Yeah strategy strategy on how you enter the space how you will grow how you build capacity collaboration on your part you just talked about how you were able to collaborate with other young people in the space even young men um, within the space yeah. in sharing information you know so that it, it helps you in the in the end and i think the, those are big um i'll just what are what, what's what's your last words anyway for any young woman looking up to you you know 
who is also wants to participate in the political space, but they've been scared. You know, yeah. they, they feel like it's a, it's a place where, you know, they, they won't thrive or it, it really doesn't accommodate young women. But we can see that it's been able to accommodate you based on the things that you have shared, the strategies that you've been able to employ in that space. What are your parting words? bet on yourself you really do have the capacity and especially if your desire to be in politics is because of service like it was for me like right. I was driven by service and and I've stayed also because of service mm -hmm. um, and then also I'll also say be sharp and have a strategy for money mm -hmm. because one thing with the, the political um, sector is they will keep you busy doing <laughs> their thing and you, you, if you're not careful, you'll, fi you'll find yourself a 50-year-old who's still relying on these political sectors. And this is why you'll find when people gain these positions, they start stealing because you haven't amassed and accumulated any wealth. And, you know, it's something that I, I had to decide, like, re realize quickly, where it's just like, uh-uh, this you're spending too much time in this thing that's not paying you. You need to be able to split your attention. And they will use you. Politicians will use you. So you also have to be sharp. And I think just finally, have a strategy for yourself what is your plan where do you see yourself and when when you have like a, a deciding strategy you will see how the different things will help you jump so it's like you see a gap there you get that position you see a gap and and, and you rise and i think ultimately get closer to what your strategy for yourself is right love that i've been on your parting words my parting words i would say <laughs> politics is addictive <laughs> it is. I'm not lying. It is. Serving the people is addictive. It's That's nice. very addictive. <laughs> um, the first time you fail, mm. don't give up. Right. For me, when I, I, I didn't get it, the first time I contested as a counselor, mm. yeah, it was hard. Mm. But I passed away that. Mm. And I found myself wanting to participate again. Even more. And yeah. I contested again as an MP. Mm. I still feel like I should continue doing it, mm. even though I did not get it. Yeah. Like uh, in Livingstone, we were seven who were contesting for the parliamentary seat. Out of seven, two were females. Out of the seven, one was a youth, and that's me. And to just uh, say it all, I felt like I was the only young person there and who was who had this vitality wanting to bring a new version of what we want in our country. But out of that, I came forth. And for me, that gave me the courage to say, OK, even coming from UNEP, I'm number four, <laughs> meaning next time I can do better exactly. if the resources if the resources are there, mm. so like Tinashe says, the number one issue that young people face is mm. resources. Mm. So if you want to contest in the next election, Prepare start now. Start yeah. now. Start yeah. res finding your resources, start finding your finances, because yes, political parties will still sponsor you, but mm. when, the politi when the campaign comes, yeah. it's not going to be there. They'll give you 10% mm -hmm. of that promise. Mm -hmm. So what are you going to do with the rest of the 90? Yeah. So this is where you find a lot of young people get stressed. So Very interesting. We could have this conversation. We could <laughs> yeah, go on and on. Yeah. In fact, you... you at the end, you brought in a very important aspect, the yeah. aspect of finance and yeah. how you prepare yourself. And that's also one of the challenges, but also we need to look at strategies. And I liked how Tinashe, you talked about have a strategy for yourself and mm -hmm. that should include finance. How do you finance your campaigns? How finance do you, your life, your life. You doing, yeah. yes. And also not looking at you. politics mm. as the place this where you're yeah, going to, to get make money your money because then yeah. you end up being it corrupt. would have been rich by now. <laughs> 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 exactly, wow brilliant conversation it's been lovely having you thank i you. think thank that this us. conversation should even be more unpacked there's, like, there's many things yeah. that we can touch and yeah. that's the important thing of having a platform like this where we talk about young women's real experiences in politics and having you share your experiences and knowing what you've gone through that can help somebody else but also it just shows that it's possible. It's possible to have young women in the space and there's more that we can do. So thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you for, for your brevity. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. And, and just for this space, I think, is a very important space. And right. I'm looking forward to see what comes out of it. And right. hopefully we'll have next women in our councils, mm. maybe on the, as a president next time right. and, and in our parliament. Right. Yes. 
Beautiful. Thank you very much for watching uh, this episode of the Young Women in Politics program. Our main aim is to amplify the voices of young women in politics, like the ones that I've just sat down with. So please remember to share, subscribe to this podcast, you know, share it with as <laughs> many young women as you can so that they can get inspiration from people like the ones that I've just had today. Thank you very much. My name is Anna and goodbye. Bye-bye. <laughs>